Welcome everyone, I'm Kevin Carpenter, volunteer at CPPCon, and for this lucky interview, we get to talk with Andreas. Um, Andreas, you and I did this back in 2020, I believe, when we were doing online classes, which I think is a great transition because you're still doing an online classes, and, and we can talk about both of them. Um, but for people that haven't met you or had the pleasure of you know, seeing your talks, uh, why don't you introduce yourself? Yeah, thanks, Kevin. Yeah, it's a while back now and uh, totally true. I'm, I'm still doing the online classes. I'm Andreas Fertig. Uh, I work as a trainer and consultant for C++. Um, yeah, obviously, I also speak at conferences and, and provide workshops there. I've written a couple of books and um, a tool called C++ Insights, which will come up in my classes um, once you take one of them and potentially of one of my talks as well. But we will see about that. I want to say I've seen you use the CPP insights or C++ insights. It's kind of a funny thing about CPP versus C++. But I've seen you use C++ insights in a few of your talks. And and just really quickly, what, what made you want to develop that as a tool? <laughs> um, because I'm lazy. And <laughs> I started the tool when I prepared a talk way back for, I guess it was NDC Oslo. And I was showing transformation. So if you have a range-based for loop, um, what does the compiler do for you in the background? And the same thing for structured bindings and for lambdas. And while doing that, I learned how the output really looked. So I had to change it a couple of times. And I was thinking, well, if I change the input, I have to change the output. And can I script that? So I was thinking, ah, I can hack together a Python script to make this for this one talk. And then I thought, well, let's look into LLVM and Clang. Well, mm -hmm. that might turn up with something good. Um, so give it an hour or two. Turned out that wasn't enough, but um, <laughs> got this thing rolling. And so, yeah, initially it was really about, I don't know, three or four transformations. And once I had them, I saw, oh, it's, it's easy to get more and more in. And the, during this process, I sometimes discovered, oh, th that one also transforms and, and uh, gives an interesting insight, um, but it was more a side effect of implementing something different. So in the end, what looks like readable C++ code is nothing else than um, an ASD dump from, from Clang formatted in, yeah, in C++. But, oh, yeah. I find Hopefully. it to be a good compliment, you know, because it's just a different, like I definitely use Godbolt for, for some things, but then CPP insights, uh, I, I like being able to see those transformations. So when we say necessity is the mother of invention, it's kind of cool how that came about. Um, yeah, and, and Matt inspired it. Uh, so Compile Explorer was the inspiration for, for putting it online that, that way. I think Matt's inspired a lot of things nowadays. <laughs> yes. So yes, I do. we're here about your classes. Um, and the first one that you've got coming on is the modern C++ when efficiency matters. And that's your pre-class, right? And again, both of your classes are online. So um, if you're traveling to CPPCon, you could still do them online while you know sitting in the Gaylord the weekend before or after. But at the same time, well, actually, I think the schedule might be a little different. But wherever you're at, they're definitely worthwhile to join. But So talk about your first class that you're doing. So the first class is, is really about um, using the modern parts of, of C++ and, and context where you need efficiency, um, where not simply say, well, I have a large computer and gigabytes of RAM or whatsoever, and I, I really don't care. I, I mean, that, that's nice, okay? You, you can simply program and, and don't care about these things that has its advantage. But I do a lot of stuff in, in the embedded world and that comes with constraints, um, mm -hmm. either time, memory consumption, so dynamic allocations, sort of these things. And in this class, we, we go into, we will, will use a um, good amount of C++ insights there to peek behind yeah, different new constructs. Um, over the years, I, I saw that, that understanding what a compiler does there helps you a little bit better deciding whether or not to use a certain feature or what impact it might have or, or haven't. And um, it, just last week, I, I did a class, um, it was not, really focusing on, on, on efficiency with simply advanced C++. And one of the exercises or one of the slides I have, I have that one for a long time now, um, they started asking me questions about 
the efficiency part, which was not really the part about it. And uh, it was about moose semantics. And then down the road, I discovered, oh well, yeah, I know this, um, but this can be more efficient. Um, so this, this is, yeah, all these learnings um, end up in, in this class. Um, the different things we talk about at the SDL at times um, enough, um, a lot about the basic features or language features, and of course, a, a little bit of move semantics, but yeah, what you can do there, if, if you try to keep it simple, um, of course, you can always go very deep. You can um, buy Nico's book and, and learn more or less all about move semantics and maybe scared. And yeah, so it's it's all about giving you different ideas, um, different understandings for different parts where you can do something if you are interested in, in specifically, um, yeah, getting more performance, whatever that is for, for your domain. And while I have all the slides and goes for both my classes, they are highly interactive. So I, I try to cover the content that's vital to the class, the attendees, however they are mixed they are. And um, yeah, we can skip topics and, and we can go deeper usually. Yeah, that's excellent. And so I noticed, you know, when I was looking and comparing the two different classes, you know, it's like your modern C++ when efficiency matters, you know, the basis is a C++ 11, you know, and, and I imagine that you do a lot of things, you know, maybe up to 17, but then that made me think of your second class, which is, you know, the uh, programming uh, with C++ 20. And so, you know, I'm going to spin it off. You can start with the efficiency in the current standards, and then you can learn all the new stuff with C++ 20 and put it together. So really, people want to take both your pre and post class to get the full benefit, right? Yes, that, that was the, the idea also behind of um, the layout here, the, the first one first and then the, the 20. Um, yeah, it, it's true. A lot of my customers still use uh, C++ 40 and 17. I'm, I'm really excited if they say 14 and not 11, so that, that <laughs> got a little bit better. Yeah. Um, so this is why it's it's still based on 11 because I see a lot of people um, doing still 11. They may have 14 available, but yeah, yeah, do do backwards compatibility and stuff like that. And then of course there there's uh, an, yeah another set of people. Maybe some sometimes they are the same who are also interested in, in the future. The future is there in, in this case so uh, using C20. But yeah, that they are they have the, the struggles that not all compilers currently support all their features. So this is also something um, I'm addressing a little. It might change actually when the class really takes place because um Clang 15, LLVM 15 is about to be released. So maybe some more features pop in that are now usable across all three um, major compilers. But this is one of the, the bigger drawbacks I, I see there. But people are still interested in, in seeing how it will be, how mm -hmm. they can use it. MSVC is, is um, perfect there that they have everything implemented. So if you're on Windows, um, yeah, nothing is stopping you there yeah. except maybe compiler bugs. Um, yeah, so <laughs> that, that, that's um, some people already use it and then others try to, to see what's in there for them. Mm -hmm. uh, and and what they for the future they they can pick or will pick. Cool. It's kind of funny you say the compiler bugs thing because it wasn't necessarily a compiler bug, but one of the first jobs I was writing a lot of MFC and we used Rogue Wave. And what's funny to me about it is my very first talk I ever gave was a lightning talk, and it was like my my three year bug or something like that because I basically found an incompatibility and it took us, you know. I was newer. It took me a long time. I can own that. <laughs> Had to get both groups involved, but there was basically a message issue with message passing between the two frameworks. Um, and so, yeah, that makes me laugh because, you know, looking now, it's like Microsoft, they've generally been really good when the standards come out of, you know, getting features implemented that are, you know, part of the STL and, and part of that. And so, um, which is interesting to me because, you know, your point of what version we work on, it's like, even in my company, when we started, we were 11. We're finally up to 17. We're kind of looking at 20, but not really sure that we're seeing features that we absolutely need to get done what we're doing yet. Um, but then, you know, I joked about how that your two classes seem to be able to run together. But to be really clear, you know, 
if you're just interested in programming with C20, you know, I think people can get a lot of that class. You know, these classes definitely stand on their own. Yes, I, I think and I hope so too. Yeah, um, it, it's, it should be a, a foundation for, for C20. So we cover all the, the um, big four features, concepts, coroutines, um, ranges, and modules briefly because they are the one feature that, in my opinion, is supported really bad and then the other two major compilers yeah um and and getting it especially if you compile for different targets um then it gets yeah a real pain at the moment so that one is just rather brief and then we, we look at other language improvements like um the the spaceship operator and then some changes the sdl brought us that we can now hopefully eliminate a lot of the helpers we wrote for yeah finding mm -hmm. things in the string or things like that. Cool. So speaking of, you know, you, you'd mentioned coroutines and move semantics. And so I'll just touch on those because you actually have two talks that you're doing this year too, one on each, right? Yes. Um, yeah, the, the coroutine one is, is really funny. I'm, I'm not sure how carefully um, you read the schedule, but I discovered just yesterday that mm -hmm. Phil Nash and I both of the core team talk, <laughs> and they are both very closely titled uh, with the same title. Um, so we, we decided now that, that I will change my title um, to make it easier for people to see <laughs> that it's not the same talk again. Um, maybe just with a different presenter, but uh, it's really two different <laughs> talks. Yeah. So core routines, I guess, this year are um, you know important uh, topic at, at CBBCon and I. From what I remember, I think there are um, various talks around coroutines this year. Yeah, there are. And, and you know, even from the rest of the conferences, CPP on C and even C++ now, coroutines are getting a lot of attention. And and it's I think that's great because, you know, you get different different speakers and different people, you know, the more it takes, especially something like coroutines, because to me, it's just that new that the more experience you can get applied to it from different angles, me as, a, as an attendee, um, it makes it easier for me to be able to pick up that much more. You know, you garner a little bit more understanding from each different style of being presented. And then, of course, since all the videos end up online, it, it makes it that much easier. Um, but then you're also doing the back to basics on standard move. So anything new for standard move or, or are you really just sticking to the foundations and and such? I, I am, to be honest, I haven't watched... Um... A lot of the talks in the past, mm -hmm. um, yeah, for for reasons to to not be um, you know biased. Uh, there. Yeah, but I, I assume I have a kind of different perspective and explaining move at this point. And because it's it's also a back to basics talk, um, it's it's really the the focus to cover the basics and, and give attendees a good understanding. Mm -hmm of what they can do and, and try to keep it simple. So yeah, if, if you wanted to skip the talk, then just listen to simply implement um, your move um, members and um, let the compiler do the rest. And that's usually good enough for mm -hmm. a lot of things. Um, otherwise there's the efficiency class. Um, but I, I really want to, yeah, clean up with a couple of things I heard in, in, in all my classes where, where people, yeah, sometimes believe or think still crazy things about move semantics and, and what happens in the background. So, I, yeah, I, I try to give people a good understanding there. And, yeah, a little bit of a spoiler alert. I hope I manage it, but currently I'm in the writing of writing. No, I'm in the progress of writing another book. Um, I, I started this idea of um, notebook C++, so short books about C++ topics. And the first one was templates. And um, the second one is move semantics. And I hope I can get the first um, still in work version ready for CPP Chrome. So at least I'm working on it. So let, let's see when the video comes out and the talk comes out when I'm, I'm ready with that one. Congratulations. I Writing is not easy. I mean, I, I find writing code hard sometimes. Writing about writing code, <laughs> that's a whole, that's a whole nother level. But then if you're a template programmer, it probably would be natural because you're writing about writing code. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Andreas, I appreciate your time this morning. Um, 
I would say I look forward to seeing you at the conference, but since you won't be on site, at least I'll be able to visit your talks online. And, and I really appreciate you giving me time because, uh, yeah, I haven't gotten to see you or chat with you since our last time in 2020. And so um, hopefully I'll catch you live at one of the conferences here next year between one of the three or four. Yes, yeah, thank you, Kevin, for doing that. And, and yeah, I look forward to maybe meeting you in person <laughs> at one of the conferences. Well, online is cool um, and great, yeah. but maybe uh, sometimes. If not yeah, after CPP on C next year, uh, I'll have to swing by after after my visit, you know. <laughs> yeah, if you come to Germany. Yeah, sure. There we that go. would be nice as well. All right, All thank right. you, Andreas. Have a great day. Thank you, you too. Bye-bye.